Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 84 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. I'm hanging out with my big reactor and my big turbine. These two things are going to be generating a massive amount of power for our base. Uh, however, there's several things we're going to need to tweak and change to make them run at their peak and optimum for, uh, efficiency. So we're going to start messing around a little bit uh, with this today. So there's a couple things I want to do. First off, I want to get a computer program to control these reactors for us. Then I want to get the turbine to go ahead and uh, start dumping power into the capacitor over here. Then that's probably about it. I don't know, we'll see. There's probably a bunch of other stuff we're gonna wanna do. But yeah, we're gonna have a lot of fun messing around with big reactors today. Um, I never really did program this thing to autocraft tesseracts, did I? It probably wouldn't be a terrible idea. We can get enderium, which is one of the you know more difficult things to get. At that point, really all you have to do is build the tesseract framing thing, which is just four ender pearls and that's about it, right, into a magma crucible. So that should be relatively easy to automate. Maybe we'll throw that into the A. We'll see. I don't know. Maybe I'll do it off camera at some point. Eh, we'll come up with something cool. So let's take a look at our big reactor controller program. Sound like a plan? Let's do it. Uh, so first off, we're going to want a computer right there. And on top of that computer, I think I had a 3x4 of monitors. That's usually my standard setup. Now let's go get the programs that we're going to need. So I'm going to do paste bin get that as reactor. And then I'm going to do paste bin that as button. Those are the two programs you're going to need. Now, if we take a look at reactor real quick, we'll want to find the following information. It should automatically detect pretty much everything uh, and where it is and all that cool stuff. It should auto detect pretty much everything. The only thing we need to worry about is the number of capacitors we have. I'm going to tell it there's only one capacitor. Remember, this is a multi-block, so we need to tell it how many uh, capacitors exist within this multi-block. That's really the only thing you should have to change. Um, and then we can give it the target speed for the turbine. So that's how fast we want the turbine to be going. And I have it set at the moment for around 1840. That's a good target speed that we want to get it to. Right now it's only running at 573. So, you know, we'll definitely get to that. So what do we have to do next? Let's see. Uh, I think we can pretty much just turn it on, but we have to run some cables first. So you can see there's all kinds of other stuff it's going to handle. Um, there's a whole video I did on how this program works, so if you really want to take a look at it, I recommend doing so. But for now, let's get ourselves the wired modems that we're going to need to connect. I'm going to need one, two, three. I think I actually need one more wired modem. So let's pop upstairs and make another one. And I might even need a little bit more cabling, but for now, wired modem, one more. And why not? Let's get a little bit more cabling. 40 should be plenty. And we might want to jump into bat mode for this. So I know I put my, did I ever put the computer control module thing for this thing somewhere? Or where might I have placed that is a really good question. There it is. Cool. So we're going to want to get that over to there. So let's do so. Uh, first things first, we're going to want to plug that in, connect that cable there. And we'll just go under the floorboards here. There we go. Uh, there's the computer. I'll probably have this guy's modem be under the computer. You know, I don't want this to be... Unfortunately, these are not micro parts in any way, so there's really no way to cover them. So you really do have to have these running totally under the ground, a whole block space below. So keep that in mind. Uh, the other place we're going to want to connect this thing is right into here. So we'll place this guy here and that should work. Cool. And then the only other place we want to get to is probably over here. So we'll place our modem down here and run our cabling like so. Nice. Beautiful. That's perfect. I 
Okay, so let's activate the modems. So that guy's connected. This thing's connected. That's connected. And that's connected. And if everything works, it should turn on and auto detect some things. So let's let it run. So we're going to exit the program. We're gonna run the program called Reactor. And what it should do is set all fuel rod levels to 99. So something we talked about in the past was that you can set the fuel rod level and this will lower the amount of energy or steam produced by the reactor. And if we take a look at the moment, you'll see that the reactor is getting up to a decent temperature, but it's really not creating much steam at the moment. Uh, and it's really not using much by way of um, fuel. Now, once it gets above 100 degrees, C, it's going to start producing a small amount of millibuckets per tick of liquid. Now the computer is going to calculate that, okay, and it's going to wait a few seconds for everything to balance out, and then it's going to go ahead and make an estimate about where it thinks it needs to get the temperature in order to get it to the sweet spot. Now the perfect place to be is uh, steam production right around, um, I think I want to say it's 2,000 millibuckets per tick. So we're going to let that thing build up there and we'll see what happens. So it did right around 80%, getting above 2,000 millibuckets per tick. Now it's probably not running at the moment because this is off. So let's activate our turbine and that'll start draining the stuff. And you can see steam is right around 2,000 millibuckets per tick, nice. So that's what we're producing. We're producing exactly 2,000 millibuckets per tick of steam, which is cool. So we can see that's doing its thing. Let's let this thing just hang back for a second and let everything normalize. And hopefully this will work out. So the steam is staying in here. We're not actually losing steam. We're doing all right there. The turbine's activating. We've engaged our coils, which means we're producing RF. And we should at this point, no, we're not filling up that thing. We should be filling up our internal energy buffer. So I'm gonna disengage coils. All right, the computer's probably automatically re-engaging them. So let's turn off the computer for a minute because we want to stop that for now. You know, I can switch it into manual mode and we will take the turbine. We will turn off the coils. Cool. So you can see we're not producing any RF, but our rotor is speeding up. So that's good. Um, cool. And energy stored is around 7%. Nice. So let's actually turn off the reactor at the moment. So we're gonna set this guy to offline, which should stop producing steam really. And then this thing will what? Will he lose speed? Or will he just kind of maintain it? Yeah, see he's gonna slowly lose some speed. So I'm gonna deactivate the turbine here. And now I want to go create the stuff we're going to need to transfer power from our reactor over to our capacitor. So we have several options for power transfer, as you guys are probably aware. Uh, one of those options is Ender Energy Conduits. Now, these are the top tier energy transfer units for Ender IO. Uh, one conduit can transfer about 20,480 RF per tick. Believe it or not, I think our turbine is probably going to use a little bit more than that. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we have for flux duct options. Uh, we can go with um, leadstone, which is 200, hardened, which is 800, redstone, which is 8,000. Uh, we could go 32,000 with the resonance flux ducts. That might not be a terrible idea. Um, what's involved in making these things? It's just hardened flux duct with some endearium. So that's not bad. 32,000 might be enough for now. But then, of course, there's the top tier, which is the cryostabilized. That allows infinite. So I think what I'm going to do for now, because it won't really produce more than that much, um, that's kind of cool. Uh, the other option I guess here is to dump destabilized redstone into a resonant flux duct. Oh, empty. Oh, so it still needs destabilized redstone. Okay. So you take, I see. So you can do it one way or another. That's cool. See, I'll go this route, because I already have some redstone, I'm sure. Or I don't. Yeah, we just have some empty ones. Okay, so let's make some uh, of these. So we're gonna need a few more of these. So we need a little bit more electrum. We'll just get two more for now, should be quick. And let's get like, Enderium plus 10. Oh, missing ender pearls. 
Remember I used like the last of those last episode? Hopefully by now you guys have produced, yeah, a few more. That should be good. So we'll just ask for, let's start off with five more. So these things actually take a while to craft. So we'll just get another set of these and then we'll say empty version. Should be pretty easy to make. We'll get about nine of them. Wouldn't mind more endearium for this. But we'll get it going at least. So let's do redstone. We'll snag half a stack. Because what we need to do is combine this with 200 millibuckets of destabilized redstone. So that is two redstone per. So if we put 18 in the magma crucible, that should cover the nine that I'm gonna want in here. And by now we should have a little bit more endearium. Nice. So we're gonna want about 12 more in there. And this should be quite enough. these guys away and there we go so these can transfer 32,000 RF per tick we'll pop down by a portal and get this thing run so that we can start using the energy we're producing because right now all the energy we're producing is definitely going to waste which you know obviously not something that we want to have happen so over here roughly is where I've got the turbine hour power output I thought. There it is. Turbine power port. Nice. So I should be able to just snap these guys into here and you know what I'll do is pump it right up into that. So this thing should start filling then. Nice. That's maybe filling? Don't know if he needs to be... Oh, you know what? I probably have to configure this guy to accept input. There we go. Look at that. Nice. So now he's filling up. There we go. No more energy buffer. So let's go ahead and turn our reactor back online. Boom. He's producing stuff again. And you can see there's a bunch of cool stats on here about, you know, the core temperature, the fuel use, how much steam it's producing. Right now it's producing 154 millibuckets per tick, but as it heats up, it should do more. And then the turbine will flip to um, online this guy. Nice. The rotor's speeding up there. I'm going to hide it. Well, for a minute. The reactor is right at 2,000 millibuckets per tick, which is pretty much the perfect spot. We really want that to be where it's at. I like that. I might wind up rebooting this guy one more time to let him recalculate his um, fuel use, but we'll see. In fact, you definitely want your reactor online when you turn it on. But we're, we are like right at the perfect spot, it seems. So that's kind of cool. But let's just, let's see, it's at 79%. Whenever you restart the reactor, it's going to go ahead and test the optimal fuel rod level. So first it lets the core temperature cool off, right? If the temperature is too hot, it's gonna get a false reading. So once it gets to right around 99C, which it's gonna do like right around now, um, it'll go ahead and set the fuel rods to 99, wait a few seconds, and it'll determine how much steam it's getting with the fuel rods at 1%. And then it's going to calculate and say, all right, if at 1% I'm getting 90 millibuckets of steam, then I'm probably going to want, you know, to be around, it looks like 82 for the 2,000 that Direwolf wants. So remember I said that, you know, 2,000 millibuckets is the optimum. And I'll explain why in a moment here. But um, it's a little conservative about it, so it waits, and then it pulls back a little bit more, and it bumps it back up. So now we're at 81 uh, and that's getting us 1753 millibuckets per sec, right? 1825, 1835. So it's trying to get it above 2000 millibuckets per tick by just pulling the fuel rods out a little bit at a time. All right, that's cool. So it looks like it's probably gonna wind up around 78. Perfect, that's good. I like that. Nice, 
So we should have steam in here. So it's going to slowly build up um, the steam amount, which is cool. And then this guy should have a pretty steady amount of steam in here all the time. Nice. We're never too low on steam. So I think everything's working beautifully. Yeah. Plenty of water coming in. Nice. So there we go. The reactor's working. Now you'll also notice that right now we're producing right around... Is that correct? Oh yeah, 10,000 RF per tick. Nice, I think. You'll also notice the energy output dropping. Remember I said there's a sweet spot for reactors and turbines, right? The turbine RPM like right around here in this green area is the sweet spot. We've already moved past it, so we're gonna get it up to the next um, area, which is right around 18,000. So energy use, cool. Turbine, let's see. RF gen, 9,500 RF per tick. Energy use, you should be, that's interestingly giving me the wrong value for energy use, and I'm not sure why, but I'll figure it out. But you can see the rotors getting up there. Uh, I think we targeted our rotor to be around 1,800. So let's give this thing a few minutes to heat up. Uh, once we get above, I wanna say 90% energy stored. So once this thing's almost full, um, we should see the coils disengage, and you'll see that on the representation visually here. So right now, RF gen is right around 9,000. The rotors are right around there, cool. There we go, energy off, nice. RF gen is at zero, the coils are blue, meaning they're no longer engaged. So what's happening here is um, we've basically turned off the need for the coils to run, that's cool. And did we turn off this guy too? Yes, so see how the um, reactor's offline? Or no, wait, it's still on, okay, that's cool. Nice, all right. So we'll let this thing hang out here for a minute. I think once we get to 1800 RPM, that's when it's gonna turn off the reactor because we wanna get the turbine up to that 1800 RPM mark. That's the top green area. So once that's there, we'll come back. All right, so we should be getting to that 1,840 RPM mark. You'll notice our reactor is currently online, right? But when the turbine hits that nice spot right around 1,840 RPM, I think is what I had it set to, it should turn off the reactor. Ta-da, reactor is offline, which means we're no longer using fuel. See, MB per tick of fuel, off. No more fuel being produced, no more steam being produced, and this guy is just going to sit here and comfortably keep his RPM. Now there will be a small amount of RPM loss here. So uh, because the, the, ro the rotors are not engaged, right, um, or the rotors are spinning but the uh, coils are not engaged, the coils basically think of them as like locking onto the rotor and you know slowing it down in order to generate energy. So while the coils are not engaged, it's not slowing it down. So a small amount of uh, speed loss will occur, but you know the thing's going to still run and he'll stay above that 1840. Now, if at some point that we start draining energy, like let's see, do we have a hardened or any kind of energy cell in here that I could snag as an example? This might work. So let's pop this guy down. We're going to configure him to output on the left. I actually don't know if he'll be able to store enough that this will be a good test, but if we allow this to accept power, he should start draining power out of here at a rate of 2,000 RF per tick. Cool. We'll bump this up to 8,000 RF per tick. And that should be appropriately right. Is this correct over here? No, it's, it's adding 50%. That's very strange. So you'd say 12,000 instead of 8,000. I'll figure out why that is. That's probably a bug in my code somewhere, but you'll see energy stored is dropping. I think when it gets below 50 um, is the point at which it'll start turning everything back on. So, yeah, I don't know if we'll quite get there, but we'll see. This guy stores 25 million, this guy can store 20. Eh, we might get to 20. Come back in a second. All right, so here goes, we're at 54%. This thing's got a little bit of a ways to go still. 52, 51, 50. We should see um, the coils turn on 
And then when our rotor drops below 1840, the reactor turns on. So now we're producing steam once again, automatically. Steam's building up inside. And we're producing just a little bit more steam than we need. Well, actually, we're right at 2000, which is awesome. Uh, RF gen from this guy is a whopping 24,363 RF per tick. We're producing a lot of power. <laughs> to put it gently. Energy storage just bumped up above 92%, which means that our rotor turns off, uh, the reactor turns off, the rotor's above uh, 1840, so the reactor is off. So everything automatically shuts off and we're no longer wasting fuel. So this is two things. Number one, it's extremely fuel efficient because it only runs the reactor when the rotor speed drops below 1840. So even if we you know, engage our coils for a second, um, notice that it didn't turn on the reactor at all. Right, so if we go to manual mode and we engage our coils, not until the coil rotor speed drops below 1840 does the reactor turn on. When we flip this guy to automatic mode, like so, um, the reactor will turn on because the rotor is below 1840 and it'll keep it on. Even though it doesn't need power, it's gonna keep the reactor going until that 1840 RPM hits. Then the reactor goes offline again. Pretty cool, right? So this guy only engages coils when this guy runs low on energy. This guy only turns on when this guy's speed slows down. That's pretty much how the logic works, and it's all in the code. So it should be pretty neat. So I'm gonna let this thing hang out here and keep an eye out for a little bit, but we probably at this point wanna tap into this power. So I'm gonna steal this, we're gonna go upstairs, and I'm thinking Tesseracts. Probably the way I'm gonna to wanna to go. All right, guys, we're back. So for now, I wanna integrate with our existing uh, systems as much as we can. And we'll probably be winding up rewiring the base at some point, or maybe when we get around to having a new base, that might happen. Uh, but let's do this. First off, I'm going to make sure this guy's still set to output energy. Now, I don't really need a cable here, so... I'm gonna put one anyway, though, because I think they look cool. Uh, so let's make this three. And we'll call this frequency um, reactor out. Cool. And your configuration will be to ignore redstone and sending energy. Cool. And over here, we will set this guy. don't really want you to interact with that in any way. So what I would probably want to do is have it right here, but I don't want this guy to get in the way either. What direction is that? North? Should be able to just whack that dude. Nice. And for now, we'll just have this here and we'll set this to reactor out and you can be receiving. So that should very quickly fill this thing up. Cool. And that means that I can probably disable all of these things down here. Nice. So you should be good there. And if we go downstairs, we should also see that we should have drained some energy. Nice. So we're using right around 800 RF a tick. Nice. That's cool. All right. So let's bring this back up here. I'm going to disconnect these guys so that no power is going into any of this. We're probably going to want to clip the power on this thing as well. Does this power go anywhere else? Probably not, but yeah. We're going to cut the power to this whole thing. So no longer will any power generation occur from these dynamos or from these dynamos. So you can see he's just building up his internal its power is not being sent anywhere. So our entire base should be at this point running on exclusively reactor power. And if we pop downstairs, we should get a pretty good approximation of how much energy our base is using. Well, not too bad, right around 665 RF per tick, give or take. And that's everything, that's kind of cool. Pretty sure that's my entire base is running off of this energy cell, which is now being kept, by the way, uh, resin energy cells can now do 32,000 RF per tick in and out. So that's nice. Uh, let's do the following. I'll probably want to, where are you getting power from? You should not even be getting power. What is happening here? You must have an internal buffer of some kind. 
but let's do this. And you know what? I can probably just do that, and that will stop outputting fuel into these things. Neat, huh? Okay. So these guys should eventually all run out of fuel. I could do like a redstone signal or something, but... Yeah, not really a need there. All right. Yeah, still right around 663. Cool. So that's our base. It's all running on the reactor now. So again, just to be clear, these conduits were not necessary between the test rack and the energy cell, nor was it necessary uh, downstairs in the basement between the test rack and the, um, the, the capacitor, but it's probably a good thing to have. What I would also like to consider doing, I definitely have to fix that energy use thing. I'll be back in a minute. All right, guys, I figured out why this isn't working. This line needed to be changed. So if this works, I'm going to paste spin this for you guys so you can use it. But that should fix the energy use. So we're saying 655, 668, 674, 665, 678. You can see I was doing some testing stuff here. So let me get out of cheat mode. And actually this I cheated in because I was testing that. So we should get rid of that and hook this guy back in. And as a result of me getting rid of that, okay, so breaking that block, I think, crashed me. But changed my number of capacitors back to one, so the energy use value should be accurate again. So what I think was happening, and this is a little bit of a technical explanation, but um, previously it did not take a game tick in order to calculate the RF energy. And for some reason now it was taking a game tick to calculate that. So um, I needed to account for the, the time it took for that to happen. So we're letting this thing run. It's gonna recalculate all its fuel costs and everything. And ooh, let's get ourselves another one of these. I'll just leave it there. I kind of like the look of that. All right, so now everything's working perfectly. It was just bothering me that that energy use value was not really accurate, but now it pretty much is. Like it's sitting around 664, 665. I mean, that's pretty darn close. It's averaging. Um, yeah, it's not terrible. I could probably make another tweak or two, we'll see. Well guys, believe it or not, it actually took me a little longer than I thought to convert my base to running the steam turbine, getting this thing up and running. So we can see the rotor currently a little bit over sped up, but don't worry, uh, as soon as power needs are starting, as soon as this thing drops below the 50% mark, um, it should just start draining energy, hence speed, from the rotor until it gets to 1840 before it turns on the reactor. So fully automated, computer craft controlled reactor is up and running. I'm excited about that. Um, it's all powered through this reactor out, and you know that's tapping into this energy cell. I don't know if I'm gonna rewire my base. I'm sure at some point we're probably gonna wind up moving the base somewhere, and once that occurs, I'll probably rewire everything, obviously, once we have a new base that's not grown totally organically like this one is. Uh, so we've got a bunch of ender pearls. That's kind of nice. And what else is up? So we've got plenty of power now. We don't have to worry about power for a long time. I might even consider um, powering these guys and shutting down the reactor downstairs um, because it's it's been a little bit misbehavy. I don't know what the deal is, but every now and then I come in here and it's running even though there's no reactor. That's why I've got that redstone dust there to see if the power output is on, but for some reason it runs when it shouldn't. So I don't know what the deal is with that, but we'll figure it out at some point. I think we'll take a break from reactor mechanics now. We've pretty much got that up and running. I might wanna look at getting more advanced in Batania because now that Batania um, has some cool updates to it. We might have some things that I'd like to get into, some more advanced Batania stuff. It might be time to fight some bosses. And I'd also like to take a look at some more advanced Thongcrafty stuff. So I should probably start getting to some research as well. So we might get back into some magical stuff in the next few episodes. Uh, aside from that, there's still some mods that I haven't even really checked out. So we gotta take a look at those. So for now, Daryl20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode with the fully automated computer craft controlled reactor. I'm thrilled to have my base powered by this thing because long story short, we should be really good on power for a really long time. And soon we'll probably start doing things that require massive amounts of power. You know what else I might wanna do? I might wanna start processing stuff in the end. I noticed I'm really low on glowstone. Yeah, I've got 11 of them. And um, 
Let's see, netherrack. I don't really want to get lots of netherrack, but nether quartz. We don't have a ton. So maybe next episode we'll look at an idea that I have around quarrying the nether without having to really quarry the nether. All right, we'll be back next time. Take it easy, guys.